Hey, it's Jay. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, so I was in San Diego last week, California, and I did a lot of landscape photography. In fact, I've already posted a video of that trip. I'll put a link down below so you can see it. But while I was in the area, I went to the University of California San Diego campus, UCSD, and there's a great building there, the Geisel Library. Uh, in the video, you'll hear me call it the Giselle Library, but it is the Geisel Library. Uh, and what I want to do is show you a, a short video, uh, just a little bit of uh, some footage of me, you know, at the campus itself. But, but really, how I um, how I took the image and processed it in Photoshop to create a clean, dramatic architectural image, and using certain techniques to clean up parts of the building itself. Uh, so I think you'll find it interesting. Stay tuned. Well, we are making our way down the coast of California towards San Diego, and I wanted to stop at the uh, University of California San Diego campus, UCSD. You see in back of me is the Giselle Library, named after someone named Theodore Giselle. You might know him as Dr. Seuss. And uh, it's just this fantastic building that I'm just getting from, um, from different angles. Uh, I'd rather be here, you know, during sunrise or sunset with some great clouds in the sky, but I'll get a, a pretty cool architecture shot and I'll probably process it in Photoshop and make it look really dramatic anyway, black and white. But uh, boy, it's quite a building. Okay, so here we are on my computer in Photoshop. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't take really enough footage when I was on campus that day, but you got a sense of how cool this building is. And this is the image I'm working with. What I want to do in Photoshop is show you how I turn this image into this image. Uh, you know, in Photoshop, there are many ways of doing the same thing. And so if you see something that could be done differently or better, uh, as I go through this whole process, please put a comment down below because uh, everyone can benefit from that. Um, I have already made a number of selections. So uh, there's a very complex building, a lot of different pieces, and so I made a bunch of selections already. When I did that, I used the polygonal lasso tool, which for straight lines is great. Uh, when you get curves, you have to be kind of careful. What I tend to do is just zoom in really closely and use very short strokes to kind of mimic the curve. Uh, you can use the pen tool as well that has the ability to kind of create curves. Uh, I'm just better at the polygonal lasso tool, so that's what I use. So when I look at this image, there's some things that kind of bug me that I'd like to address in Photoshop. One is the background is kind of distracting, certainly the lower part of the background. I was on the middle of a campus, so there's only so much I could do compositionally, which I think I did, but still I'd like to simplify it more. Secondly, the um, the building itself looks kind of messy. You know, there's some discoloration, a notable amount of discoloration among the, the building and the cement. And so I'd like to clean that up if I can too. And then lastly, I just want the really distinctive features of this building to pop even more, to really highlight the unique nature of the structure. So those are my goals. Um, what I want to do is start with the background. And again, I made a number of selections. Uh, and so I can go up to select, load selection. And I think I called it total sky and know that the sky is peeking through some of these holes in the building so you know if I'm gonna if I can zoom in you would see that uh, I had to make selections for you know areas like like this on the left but uh, you know, again I made a bunch of selections put them together for one big selection of call it sky or really background and so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, use the exposure adjustment layer and I'm going to darken the selected area which is everything but the building. 
And I want to darken it to the point where I, when I look down below, those buildings and trees that are, I find distracting, you know, just about disappear. That's, that's pretty good. Then I can go back, reselect. I'm going to choose my gradient tool. Make sure it's linear gradient tool. Make sure the foreground color is white, which it is. I'm going to drag up from the bottom. To make sure it's straight, I'm going to hold the shift key down and drag up from the bottom. And you got to play with it a little bit, but you get a sense of, uh, of the ability to really darken the stuff that you just don't want to see. So here's the before, here's the after, uh, and that's reasonably good. In addition, on the building itself, I'm going to deselect, by the way, by hitting Command D on a Mac. Uh, the building itself, there is this fence along the bottom of the building, which I find distracting. And I'd like to kind of do the same thing to uh, remove that distraction. And so I'm going to reselect the sky. Now, I just want the building. But the building is essentially everything except the background or the sky. And so I can simply invert this selection and I get the building. And again, I'm going to use a, an exposure adjustment layer. I'm going to pull back until that fence on the bottom is you know, not really noticeable or certainly less distracting. Uh, that's pretty good. I'll again reselect. I got my gradient tool selected, and so now it's a matter of just dragging up from the bottom, holding down that shift key to make sure it's straight. And uh, yeah, again, you could play with it a little bit, but that looks pretty good to me. Let me deselect by hitting Command D. Uh, and again, here's the before. Here is the after. Now, really the trickiest part here is reducing some of the discoloration in the uh, in the building itself. To do that, I'm actually going to use a levels adjustment layer. And so let me make a selection or, or load my selection. Uh, I know I selected all of the overhangs, kind of this, the, the horizontal pieces of the building. Uh, again, that was pretty tricky, but I was able to get it done. All the selections took me maybe 90 minutes. So it took me a while, but I was able to get it done. Um, I'm going to go up to the levels uh, adjustment layer and what I want to do is reduce the differential between the darker parts of these selections uh, and the lighter parts. And you could play with these various levers. So on the bottom I can pull up on the black side and that's going to lighten up everything. And if you pull down on the right it will kind of darken everything but darken the, the brighter points. And so you can already see it's becoming a little bit more uniform. Um, and you can use the histogram above too. You know, pulling down from the right side is going to brighten it up. Pulling up from the left side will darken it. But then you can play with the middle slider to kind of get it where you want it to be. So, you know, something like that. It's not, not perfect, but uh, I don't need it to be perfectly smooth. I just want to reduce those distracting uh, elements uh, you know, the discoloration. And so give you a sense, there's the before, there's the after, just a lot cleaner. And I want to do the same thing with the other parts of the building. Again, it's just really the cement pieces. And so I can load selection, I think I called it arms, so all of the arms, I had to select all of them individually and then just put them together in one selection and you can see it there. Um, again, I'm going to use a levels adjustment brush and uh, really just play around with it until I'm, until I'm comfortable. It doesn't have to be exactly the same tone as, as, the, uh, as those horizontal pieces, but I just want to make sure it's reasonably smooth. Uh, you know, and I'm getting that you can play with the, the middle slider as well to make it darker or brighter, um, but you know, something like that. Again, you can, you can play with it all you want. I play with it a lot longer on the on the first image that I that I did, but you know that's reasonably good. So again, here's the before for the building, kind of messy, a lot of discoloration. Here's the after, uh, which is again a lot smoother. Next thing I want to do, I want to make those windows pop a little bit more and create some contrast there. So I'm going to go up to load selection. I called it windows, total windows, because again there was a lot of different windows that I had to select. And here I'll just use a curves adjustment layer. 
And again, for contrast, you want to make that S curve. So pulling up on the right side to brighten things up for the, for the highlights and pulling down to, to darken those shadows a bit. And you just get a bit more contrast. And so here's the before, here's the after. You know, it pops a bit. Um, let's convert to black and white. Uh, which is pretty straightforward. I'm going to the adjustment layers, picking the black and white adjustment layer, and there you go. Now you could play with the colors. If I wanted to darken the blues, I pull down. Maybe I will a little bit, but not too, too much. Uh, I do, however, want to create a bit of a gradient in the sky, just to create a, bit, a little bit more interest. So I need to select the sky, which I had already done. I have a total sky. Okay, um, and then I want to, I'll choose a curves adjustment layer. I'll pull down to darken the entire selection, but then I want to reselect, go to my gradient tool and pull down from the top and you get that nice gradient in the sky. Last thing I'm going to do on the building is I want to create a little bit of interest on the bottom middle panel between those arms. And so I had made a number of selections, but let me load, oh, let me deselect the one I'm on. So let me command D to do that. I'm going to go down load selection. I think I called it lower center. You could see that selection there. I'm just going to choose a curves adjustment layer. I'll brighten up everything by pulling up and you see that selection brightening up. I don't want the whole thing bright. I just want a, a hint of brightness as if you know there was some light reflecting on it almost. And there was a lot of light bouncing around there. Um, and so what I want to do is reselect that section. I'm going to use a gradient tool. This time I'll use a radial gradient tool. And I can just kind of pull in from the middle and you get kind of a circular area. And you can play with it around, you know, however you want to do it, but play with it just to get a little bit of interest in the lower section. I guess lastly, I'll just take the entire image and I'll put a, um, a curves adjustment layer to create some more contrast. And so kind of a big S curve for everything. So pulling up on the right side to brighten up the highlights and pulling down to darken those shadows a bit. And you can sort of see where I'm getting to, right? Um, this is a lot better than what I started with, in my view, more dramatic. You do get a sense of the very interesting aspect of the architecture. And certainly converting to black and white makes you focus on the shapes, lines, and curves uh, that you get from this building. So I hope you found this to be helpful. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments down below. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you like this content, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you soon.